he loves you then the majority loves you glory to jesus if he loves you the majority loves you so there are things that we tag ourselves with it's not the truth the fact that you fill the paper a paper that you filled is not a filled life it's an error to think that you are filled in life it's a paper it's a biology paper you filled define it am i here with the church at all how can a believer be saying i have disappointment on my life you have named your life disappointment he has there are people who have named their life my sickness he has personalized their sickness this is for me but there is a truth about your life you are the child of God you are blessed you are full of joy you have the comforter in your heart that is the truth Paul says keep thinking about it and you will have no worry praising him anytime circumstances are bad remember that circumstances is not the truth if a man be in Christ he's a new creation all things are past behold all things are new and all things are of God He said, fill your mind with the truth. And he said, fill your mind with things that are noble. <laughs> noble. And Paul said, have you not seen that not so many noble and wise were called? But God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise and the weak things of this world to confound the strong so the fact that i have been called from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light is a noble calling anytime i feel like being dampened in my spirit and being heavy in my spirit i should just remind myself that the fact that i'm a child of god is enough you want to reject me you can reject me but hear me i've received the biggest acceptance is to be called a child of god so paul said that, that the eyes of your understanding may be open that you may know the hope of your calling you have never you have not understood what it means to be called a child of god that is why sometimes you feel depressed that's why you feel depressed this person doesn't like me that person i was rejected here i've been rejected in an interview i've been rejected i've been bounced a u.s visa i've been bounced that so a u.s visa is bigger than your life lift up here and say thank you for calling me lord it's a noble calling somebody shout it's a noble calling i pride myself as a child of the living god see i am a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that I may show forth the praise of his glory in the name of Jesus say I show forth the praise of his glory he said think about these noble things it's noble it's noble it's noble to be a child of God it's noble when the rich man died he found himself in hell when Lazarus died angels came and escort him it's a noble calling it's a noble calling Paul says that the one who has found the office of a bishop has found a good work it's a noble calling to be called a child of God may you never be depressed it's enough to be a Christian it's enough to be a child of God don't define your joy don't define your prosperity don't define your victory by material things no no those are shallow mindedness of the world you see them stand before a car probably a ferrari then they take a picture 
this time what they do is that they put a private jet there, then they put a Ferrari there, then the person takes a picture, and you'll find Christians that those things are on are our wallpapers on our phone. We wake up to look at it. This is life. No, life, life, eternal life is to have the life of God in you. And that when you die today, angels will escort you into the presence of God. That is life. That is nobility. That is nobility. That I am heaven bound. That I'm a citizen of heaven. That is nobility. I respect you because you are heaven bound. I respect you because you are born again. I respect you because the life of God is in you. Am I preaching to you at all? I'm not saying these things are bad. But these things are not life. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12. He says that a man's life is not in the abundance of things that he possesses. Listen. The problem with the body of Christ today is that you want us to by force explain scriptures according to how you see life. It's wrong, though. It's wrong. I can't, I can't do that. Jesus came and said, The thief came not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Then he comes and defines life and he says, Life is not in the possession, uh, abundance of things a man possesses. That means his life is not in possession. So what is his life? People of God, these things, the world flaunt that that is life. It looks beautiful, but that is not it. That is not it. Life is to have the divine nature of God inside of you that the Holy Spirit will dwell in you and be one with your spirit. That is life. That is life. That is life. That is life. And the best life is to be born again. He said, it's a noble thing. Think about it. And he said, think about reputable things. Things that are reputable. The Bible said, and Jesus made himself of no reputation, but put on the form of a servant. And being made lesser than a servant, he died on the cross and died a shameful death, even the death on the cross. So he put away what human beings call reputation and took what God calls reputation. God's reputation is to be his servant. There is a level of nobility when you become a son. A, a son. And then he shifts you to a place of reputation when he can make you an honorable vessel. Meet for his use. Honor is service. Behold, I come quickly to give unto everyone according to his deeds. Heaven's reputation, heaven's rewards, heaven's honor is given to those who worked for the Lord. Those who worked. I'm not talking about those who work for men, full of hypocrites, hypocrisy and pretense. I'm talking about those who work genuinely for God. And God was the center of their heart. That is reputation. That is reputation. Find something to do for God. So sometimes you must think about the reputation you have that is being just an usher. It's a reputation in the spirit. Being a singer. Being someone who can be sent. Go here and get this for the church. Who can be sent? Go to an area, go and start a church. Who can be sent? He said, this is the reputation of the kingdom. When the man is laboring. For the work of God. Think about this. Think about this. I've told you before. Some, the only thing that sometimes makes me happy. Is that my life is a sacrifice on the altar of God. It makes me happy. 
I think about this reputation. I think about it. It's a reputation. It's a reputation. I'm proud of it. I'm not doing business with, with this thing, this ministry I do. I'm not doing business. No, God knows my heart. I care less about what I get. It's not my worry. It is not my worry. No, it's not part of it. That I sit down and imagine that one day I also will be in a convoy and then there will be police with me. And no, 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 no. No. The reputation is the work. I'm on the ground. I'm on the ground. I'm the reason why God can wake me up, pray for this person. That is my reputation. That God can count on me. The way me standing here, God can count on me. That several times I have heard from God and it is true. That means God speaks to me. That is my reputation. Serving him. That me standing here, one day I will get to heaven and Jesus will look at me and say, Thou faithful and good servant, I gave you a church, you took good care of it. That is reputation. And anytime I must be depressed, I must think, Paul says I should think about this reputation I have. That there were many wise people, many strong people, but he chose me and didn't only keep me at the place of being a son, but he has shifted me to a place of a servant. And I'm serving. I'm proud of being a service person in the kingdom. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This, this thought never leaves me. This thought never leaves me. My pride is not how the church looks like. My pride, no, 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 no. My pride is that I know, I know from, from, from God's intention, he is with me, he is using me. That is, that is my reputation. I know. He has given me every proof that he is with me. It's, it's enough reputation for me. Some of you think reputation is to be dead, that, that, of this. That, that, that. No, 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 no. The president of Tanzania is still an usher in his church. <laughs> his reputation is not to be a president. His reputation is the usher that he is in his church. In this job, eh, people will insult you. People will offend you. People will betray you. People will misunderstand you. They will misinterpret you. They will do that. Because of that, when you don't take care, you will never be happy as a pastor. Because when you don't take care, every day you will see something and hear something someone is doing. And you ask yourself, what, what at all is this job? Pastor, the reputation that comes with it. The fact that God can depend on you. Can you imagine that God wants to speak to Grace Mountain today, this morning, all of you, and then he had to fall on me to put words in my heart so that I can come and tell you. <laughs> that is my reputation. <laughs> I am proud of it. And he said that think about authentic things, things that are authentic. I don't spend much here, time here. Think about things that are authentic. It will help you to praise God. Sir, many things are fake. So if you know you have not gone to Juju, yet you can preach. And you know that your preaching is authentic. It's possible to think about it. It's enough to praise God. <laughs> it's enough to praise God. For people to see visions, they have to go for them to put leaves on their eyes so they can see. Then you stand up one day, pick a microphone, then God opens your eyes, you start seeing. Even if it's not deep, eh, you are still authentic. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God that you're authentic. Thank God that you're authentic. In, your, in whatever you are doing for God, in your life, whatever it is, thank God that you're authentic. There are people who stole money to build. 
And some way, somehow, you have your building and you didn't steal from anything. You are authentic. Your life is authentic. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. There are pastors who cannot preach certain messages because of scandals. So there are certain messages, even if God put in their heart, they can't preach it because they've messed up. And if you, all God needs is to drop the message because your life is free from scandal and you can say anything you want. That alone makes you authentic. Thank him for it. Thank him. He said, I think about the authentic things in your life. Authentic. When you know genuinely you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You have not missed it. You are not lying. It's not a pretense. It's not hypocrisy. You know deep within that you have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And you rise up every day and there is this joy in your heart. Listen, this joy and this praise, it happens when there is this authentic spirit in you. Knowing very well that you are not messing up. Whenever you see people moody, there is something wrong. Every time when the heart is genuine and it's with God, you see joy. The day I start sleeping with people in the church, you see that when I stand here, I'll start messing worse. The grace of God will help us. <laughs> By grace, whatever you do, doesn't matter. God is with you. Oh boy. You, you, you just face eyeball to eyeball with someone you slept with. <laughs> you can't talk of purity. He said, think about things that are authentic. And you know your life, that deep within, you are full of love. You are pure. You are holy. Everything about you. Though if, if you may be having errors and mistakes, but you know within yourself that you are doing everything you have to do with God. He said, these things bring praises. Oh, I thought you would shout a bigger hallelujah. This is our life. This is our life. God said, keep thinking about these things. Keep thinking about it. Keep, I'm not afraid to tell all of you this. If I will never be a millionaire pastor, but I'll be a pastor to preach to many people, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm telling you. It's from the depth of my heart. My only problem will be that at a point in time, if I have to shift from the will of God, no, that one will be a disaster. If I lose the authentic aspect and I have to start engineering messages just to make money, engineering messages just so that people will, um, I will control or manipulate people into engineering prophecy so that people will do this. When I get to that point, listen, it's, it, it, it's very costly to be fake. <laughs> it's very costly to be fake. I'm telling you. Fake people don't sleep. They don't sleep. They are dangerously worried. Who next will find out my tricks? <laughs> Goodness, some of us wake up and we are woken up. We are not, we are not fake. My own day is, is that bad, the crowd. Yes, yes, brother John, I was talking to you yesterday. I asked him, Where do you come from? He said, I come from Imo State. I said, No, I heard. I just heard God that is, I'm not going to change it to say, and I, I, oh, okay, it was him who said, I told him, I heard God, you are coming from a dose state. Or see, yes, that is why I was born, that is why I grew up. <laughs> He's here. He said, that is why I grew up. I said, yes, that is what God spoke to me right now. That the fount, the, what we are dealing with is from a dose state. That is where a seed is springing from. He said, that is why I was born, that is why I grew up. But I come from the Muslim. I said, okay. I, I can only be authentic. The fact that he told me it's from Imo State doesn't mean I have to change it. What I heard is what I have to say. That's what I have to say. You have to be authentic. It, it, it frees your heart. It frees your heart. You are not afraid. Why? Why this pain? Why this pain? So some of them are in big cars. They are in big churches, but they, are, they don't have peace. 
So if I know this is how real I am with God, and yet this is how far God has brought me, I just must be happy and give him glory. I know he will take me to the next level when I'm prepared enough. When I'm prepared enough, give him glory. Give him glory. You see, that is how it works. Then he continues compelling things, gracious things, the best, not the worst. He said, think about the best, not the worst. Forget about things that are not necessary in your life. And think about the best things. He said, think about the beautiful things, not the ugly things. It will help you praise God. He said, things to praise, not things to curse. Things to praise. Think about them. People of God, as I end here, think about it. Think about it. Do you want to thank God for GMM? Think about the beautiful things. Don't focus on the ugly things. We may have ugly things. If you want to uh, uh, thank God for your wife and be okay with your wife, if you want to thank God for your husband, look at the beautiful things about their lives. Look at the best things about their lives. The more you think about those things, the more you are grateful to God about their lives. Oh, I pray that this will begin, become our lifestyle. To become our lifestyle. And the verse 9 says that when we do this, God will start working. God will start working. Verse 9. Put into practice what you learned from me. What you heard and saw and realized. Do that and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Can we close with this? Put this into practice. What you have learned, heard, and saw about me. That means it was his life. He was not just preaching. This is the things he was doing. He was thinking about things that are true. Things that are authentic. Things that are noble. Things that are best. Things that are beautiful. Things that were not ugly. Things that are, He was thinking about. He said, you saw me do these things. And he said, do them also, so that God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Do you know what a harmony is? When an organist is playing a song, instrumentalists are playing, and it's making sense. He said, God will put your life together, so that very soon your life will make sense. (laughs) Rise up on your feet. God will put things together. He said, when you do these things, when you practice them, your life will be like a song. Am I here with the church at all? Your life will be like a beautiful, harmonious song. There will be different keys coming together to make a beautiful song. Have you seen that the organist, uh, the guitarist may be playing something with his own key. Organ may be playing something with his own key. Drum too will be playing something with his own key. But at the end, you will be hearing a song that is so beautiful. He said, when we practice these things, the God who makes everything work together will usher our lives to the most excellent, the most excellent harmonies, the most excellent Your life will be the most excellent, harmonious life. If our lives are like a song, your life will be the one people will love to sing. (laughs) Hey! I prophesy this again. If our lives were to be a song, by your praises, by your thanksgiving, May God work it together that your song, your life will be the best song people will love to sing. In the name of Jesus, give him glory. Begin to worship him. Begin to thank him. Begin to adore him.